The views, information, and opinions expressed during the following program are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent the views of Access Communications, its representatives, or its employees. Jim Leskin, you're the secretary treasurer of the Saskatchewan Ford Mercury Club. Did I say that right? Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked a little bit about what we were doing with uh, upcoming club shows, and things are still a bit vague and everything. But today we thought we'd interview some new members and so, or some new cars, maybe new members, a little mix of both. Tell us what we're doing today, Jim. Yes, uh, well, being secretary treasurer, I get my uh, thumb on the uh, cars that are coming into the club, and today we have an awesome lineup. We've got four brand new cars to the club and uh, never been shown in the city of Regina. Wow, okay, tell us a little bit about them before we get to them. Just, what have we got here? Well, we've got a couple real jewels. We've got a 69 Torino 351, uh -huh. and we've got a 70 Shelby GT500, a real deal. Oh, okay, fantastic. Then we've got a 69 Mercury Montego and I believe a 50 Shoebox. Ah, love so it, love I'm it. I'm sure the owners will be filling your airwaves with knowledge <laughs> of their vehicles. <laughs> Friedrich here with Cruisin and you've got a 1969 Mercury Montego. Mercury Montego. It's very close to, I'm just thinking that one show Clint Eastwood was in, what was it called? Uh, oh. Uh, I forget now anyway, there was, he built a car and it was uh, in Detroit and a uh, oh, long story anyway. Okay. So tell us a bit about your car, where you got it from. Well, I'll, I'll, it's kind of full circle. I used to own a 66 GTO and I lost it to a fire and then I was out of cars for 25 years and I just happened to be talking to an uh, acquaintance or a friend at a dog club and he had said, I have all these cars in storage. All and these cars? <laughs> he, yes, he had a number of them and, and, uh, he, and I said, well, if you ever consider selling one, would you uh, uh, think about me? And he goes, well, hey, I've got a Montego that I parked 32 years ago that I only had it for two weeks and I basically put it in the garage. and." Uh, the only bad thing, it's got a seized engine, and he uh, he said, would you consider buying it? And I took Fred uh, from the Mercury Club with me, and we went and looked at it, and we found the body was really good, and I, I wanted a, just a strictly a, a cruiser. Yes. Um, not so much, uh, uh, I would say, a show car, because I already had one, and it, it's a lot of work and commitment, so I'm kind of representing the daily drivers here today. Ah, I like that. I like that. And I was so fortunate, Fred says, I can hook you up with this guy called Mike that I have an engine sitting on an engine stand. We could have you up and running in two weeks. And I went, what? What? I said, that's good. What? And, <laughs> and if it wasn't for Mike and Fred, I, I wouldn't be. These are Ford guys? The they're Ford, Ford Club, guys, Ford yes. Club guys? And I owe them my gratitude. Isn't that the joy, really, when you think of it? of being part of a car club. It's not just, you're not just going to, not, not, not dissing service mechanics, any of that stuff, they're all good, but they have to make a living. You're working with relationships here and guys that know stuff and where parts are. And Billy's got something in his garage. I saw it 10 years ago and this and that, the other thing. Yes, ex exactly. And uh, I've never belonged to a car club, but they just took me under their wing and I had a little bit of experience. Um, you know, I'm at the, you know, when I had my GTO, I felt like if I could rate it from one to five, I was like a four. 
and some of the cars here are like fives and fours they're just <laughs> beautiful i'm at the lower end but i don't mind so i can piggyback off their experience they've been helping me out quite a bit yeah. getting this car up and running so oh I, that's good so w tell me what was this paint just like this or did the, you repaint it what it, uh, this has actually been repainted and you the, did it you no no the i think it was this, the this second this is how owner. you found it I, what the story is this is was a local car brought in by a doctor and oh. he and he ordered it with the buckets which you don't see it has a clock which you hardly see in montegos so it's got the deluxe interior yeah and then he sold it to an, a nice lady that worked at the leader post and then my acquaintance friend from the dog club bought it and then now i'm now it's so it's somebody mine. painted it along the way yes and but it sat in that garage for a long time 32 just, years and then this was the 32 year paint job exactly yeah geez what color is that uh, it's um looks like rough rider green oh <laughs> yes oh people love it i had a i went to an appointment last week and a guy followed me into a parking lot and that started asking me questions and he goes i love the color yeah and the original color is called ivy green it's flat with no metallic yeah and this is to me it's like a step up and it originally came with the 351 but for the cost of rebuilding it it would have taken uh probably a month and thousands of dollars to get it gee that's a clean looking engine isn't yes it? i owe that to mike he is meticulous oh yes <laughs> yes i i was i went every third day to watch him work on my car and i was a uh, big fan of watching him uh, go through the car uh, and educate me what he was doing on it. Gee, I love this. Is this your power steering here? Yes, it it's is. It's got a little dipstick. <laughs> I yeah. love that, the old school stuff dipstick there. And you can see I haven't, I started on this side of the car kind of refurbishing it and I got one chrome shock tower and I haven't cleaned up this side of the oh, engine yet. Oh, is this a yet. chrome one here? Well, well no, you, that's like a little aftermarket. Oh, you buy those little aftermarket things. Yes. Cool. And then, of course, the nice color, clean air cleaner. It, that's a clean looking engine there. So what do we got in here? We got a three, what? 302. 302, yeah. Ford 302. And it came factory with a 351 mm -hmm. Cleveland? Yes. Why yeah. do they always call them Cleveland? I forgot that. No, well, because I, made in Cleveland or yes. something? Yes. Yeah, and the yeah, other okay. one would be a Windsor. Windsor, yeah. Toronto, Windsor, yeah. yeah. Ontario, Windsor. Okay, cool. So there we have it. So the club helped you put in a new engine and did you put in a new master cylinder? Yes. Yeah, that was Mike. He says, let's get this uh, get that all cleaned up. Right? All the safety issues like uh, and the reliability. He says, let's let's just throw a few hundred dollars in here. New alternator, new belts, new water pump, new fuel yeah, pump. And let's not fool around. All, all those things. Yeah. Starter probably too. Yeah. Yeah. You get everything that starts to want to go after a while in a car, isn't it? That That's exactly right. When I first looked at it, it had fuzzy green Grinch seat covers on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I thought, oh, and I kind of felt, and it didn't seem like there was any rips. And I went, that can't be, really? can't be possible. And so when I acquired the car, I started ripping them out. And what I realized that the lady must have put these seat covers back 40 years <laughs> ago, like a few years after, because somebody professionally did it because they had the professional clips it it oh. took me hours to cut and take the seats out to get the these clips and there was like over a hundred upholstery oh, really? clips really? and they were and actually they they weaved the seat covers oh, through the chrome uh, <laughs> and it was it was just like so right it, out just, of the factory. It, it just preserved the seats just like they're brand new huh yes that's the why piping looks good everything back seat well back seats always look like nobody ever sat in them you know and then look at this big deck back here did you have to do anything back there no no usually that gets bleached out you know i think it was this car really got saved uh by sitting in that garage for 32 years and there's other stories of cars that yeah. i know that have been sitting in garages and i want to say if uh, anybody has a car sitting in a garage get it going life is too short to let your car your 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 vintage car sit you know yeah i know i know a lot of times we you know? don't have the money though or time or effort but you're right you're right absolutely get it get it out and get 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 working on it and so let's hear it let's fire it up a little bit okay yeah yeah so it's got the automatic uh, console shift kind of sporty huh it is i i really enjoy this car this... oh yeah oh yeah you can feel that oh yeah that's nice so really what you have is kind of a bit of a resto mod here, right? Yes. 
And on Montego, this model is kind of unique where it was like a upscale sport, older gentleman's car. Yeah. And then the younger guys, after they inherited from the second owner, they started fixing these cars and making them more yeah, more racy. More, more, more hot rodish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot rod. You just don't see these Montegos around, and that's what kind of drew me to this car. Just restored it about a week or two ago. Oh, you did? Yes, I, I um, wow. repainted the interior, and then I ordered this up from the the states. This uh, mat, it's okay. a reproduction. Okay. And then I went and found a really good spare to yeah. dress it up, and that's not quite correct, but. I flipped it so you could see it. Just it's uh, and that that vinyl flooring. Yes, it's a rubber. You have vinyl, and then this is rubber. I wanted to go one. Okay. Uh, one quality. Is this better. sort of close to what the original was? Yes, as close as you can get. That's actually very nice stuff. And I thought I'd for your viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. This okay. is okay. Go this ahead. This is hold um, a company down in the states. If you have any rips in your car, you can buy. Um, the material and these guys are so excellent they, you, they, they've they'll done, send they've, this they, to you they've done color swatches for you yes before you purchase it they'll S give you the swatches sm sms auto fabrics that's cool yeah so they knew that they, they thought maybe this was close to you right they thought maybe that might be too or what were they thinking there? that's exactly they want to make sure you order the right so they give you the swatches and now i know that is if I want to redo the seats, this is. Um, oh, this is the one, huh? Uh, yeah. It matches up good. So huh? I thought I'd... Oh, look at this here. <laughs> they got a picture of it here, huh? Montego MX is luring. Low price includes the lavishly appointed cloth and vinyl and all vinyl interior. Wood tone instrument panel. Color keyed dip loop, deep loop carpeting and appointments with handcrafted look. Honest to God. <laughs> <laughs> I have to plug them because I know a lot of people. Are always looking for these companies it's word of mouth look at this trunk in here a lot of times this is a place sometimes where moisture builds up and rusts was that like that that's how it was yes that's what drew me to the car was the, the condition oh my just a, god just a nice clean car and beautiful yeah i've I'm, I'm been pretty happy so with the it. good thing to do is change the gas tank right away the guys say yeah yeah it was leaking and uh don't Mike, fool around yeah, with that yeah we ordered one so you, you changed the gas tank you did the brakes you did the uh you did uh, all the water pump and the starter and alternator and or whatever it is all that stuff yeah, yeah and new duels new duels oh, okay else? okay so you, yeah. you spent a little money then. yeah i got but not out of this world no no i had a budget and it fell right in that budget really uh, and i was i was pretty happy about that so there's somebody at home thinking about doing this um without getting into numbers is it affordable this car if you yes i would say there's cars out like like this if it's not like these gentlemen's cars these these are, are <laughs> oh, these are trophy cars yeah but if you want a daily driver there are cars like this so if you can find a good body this the ford it, the parts are really quite reasonable for um like this mercury the gas tank i think was like 200 dollars you know, oh, the water pump, uh, you know, like sixty dollars. So like, they're not knocking you out of the no, park on this no, stuff. No. Oh, that's fantastic. Very common. The guys at Auto Electric really help me out. They no. Auto Electric is a good place. I hate to, yeah. you know, I'm not. We're not here to plug companies, no. but I've had good luck buying things there. Yeah, they really help me out. Oh, wait a day, Stephen, the part will be here. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, okay. That was really nice. I know. I was. I had a car rebuilt at a '56 Chevy. I was amazed they did it. Yeah, it was great. Well, thank you for showing us the car. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Why why this car? Just particular, just landed in your lap, huh? I, it, it, that's, you nailed it. It landed in my lap. Uh, me and Al just hit it off, and he wanted to sell. I wanted to buy, and, and I knew there was potential here of a good daily driver. And, uh, you know, I get the thumbs up, and, I, you know, for a budget car. That's a, a nice feeling, and it got me back with... Uh, with the These Ford guys, with yeah. Ford guys, so. Yeah, no, that's a great, great car and a great story. Well, thank you very much. Well, I appreciate thank you. it. And I want to thank Fred Wagner for helping me out and, and Mike. They, they've been, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be uh, wouldn't back. Be, into, wouldn't, wouldn't be driving. No. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on Cruising. So, Mike, what have we got here? We've got a, a Ford, obviously. A, yeah. Is it a three, has it got a 351 or is that badge out? Oh, no, it's a 351 uh, Windsor four barrel automatic car. Okay, what is it? It's a Ford it's, GT. It's a, yeah, it's a 1969 Torino GT. Torino GT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I was thinking about that Clint Eastwood movie. I was talking to him. That's a 72. Yeah, yeah. same same thing, huh? Yeah, well, yeah. earlier uh, versions. So. Look at that hubcaps there, 4 GT. Yeah, oh yeah, that's all brand new. It's gotta new. be original, or is that brand new? Yeah, <laughs> that's re the reproductions, they're you brand can, new. You can get that stuff, Yeah, huh? you can buy them, yeah. So this is basically how I bought the car. I oh, thought, you did, really? Yeah, I tinkered with it a little bit and done some tuning and so on. It, it's still, it's it's a work in progress for the best, oh, best man, way to explain oh, it. Uh, What's the but, color called, Ford? Well, that's a, that's a candy apple red, and it's got the, uh, the red interior is kind of a maroon is how they were. Okay, is this original uh, from beginning, this color? Or yeah, that's the proper color for it, yeah. It's been painted though, the car, right? At one point, yeah, it's one been point. repainted, yeah. And Very nice job though. Very yeah, that's, uh, so somebody's added a few gauges to it, and they, it came with the dice, I just left them on there. <laughs> oh, it came with the dice. A lot of guys want that really badly. Yeah. So, yeah, oh. it's been fun. This is the one I cruise in. The other car is more my trailer queen. This one here I drive all the time. Yeah, this is an yeah. everyday driver. Let's just, I'll leave the door open for a second. Oh, okay. Mike. I just want to, I want to sit inside that car for a second. Yeah, just go for ahead. a second, just to see what it feels like. Oh! You know, those seats are always comfortable, aren't they, huh? Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful dash cluster, too. Huh? And these, these two extra ones were put in, huh? Yeah, two there and two on the other side. And uh, so I put, this is a Grand Touring. Yeah. Do we call it a Grand Torino? No. Well, they just call it a Torino GT this year. Torino GT, and the yeah. other one, yeah. Later on, they changed names and the uh, factory, yeah, factory uh, advertising and so on. So is this a Canadian-made car or an American-made car? This this one was made in Canada. This is a Canadian-made car, okay. Yeah. And I uh, love the paneling down here, huh? So it comes in here, the upholstery, yeah. Gee. That's so where did you find this car, Mike? I found it on the internet. The uh, It came from down east. I'm normally not a fan of buying anything from down east because it's all rotted out. Yeah, they have or, a little bit of rust. Yeah, an old so. guy had this for many years. He restored it. And then uh, he retired and sold his cars, his house, his garage, everything. Oh, my goodness. And I uh, went to an old folks' home. So a, a guy that collected uh, Dodge Mopar stuff bought it. Had it for a year and couldn't go anywhere with all the COVID issues. So, oh. Uh, I guess uh, you thought, well, what am I doing with a garage Ford. full of Mopars with one Ford that I can't <laughs> drive? So he put it on the internet. So I had, uh, his granddaughter was good enough to email me uh, the appraisal. Because oh. it's pretty hard to buy a car sight unseen and you don't know if, if you're getting a rust bucket or not. And it turns out that this is everything they said it was. It was a rusty car, been looked after and, and whatnot. So. Anything special about the 351 Windsor that we want to know about? Not really. It's just a real good motor. This is probably the best year there the, the, of that engine. Highest compression was in 6970. 6970. Um, yeah. yeah. This is a four barrel setup. So yeah, it's is it different than the American one? Uh, no, no, all the same. Cleveland. It, about 290 horsepower back in the day. Yeah. And yeah. it moves this thing pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Rolls, rolls out not too bad. It's got a very nice presentation. Beautiful red color. You were very lucky to yeah, find this Yeah, I don't mind car. the red at all. And this bright work is just the. Yeah, it's not bad shape, you know, for an old car. I mean, really, this is. Uh, I mean, it's a driver. It's not a show car by any means. Uh, but it's getting pretty close, though, Mike. You know, no, like, it needs more work, but uh, I enjoy it. It's fun to drive. Yeah. You know. So like, okay, so you say it's not a show car. What would you have to do to make it a show car? get the paint up to par the the paint's got uh, it's not the best quality paint it's got a little dirt and stuff in it I'm gonna get it wet sanded out and polished by a friend of mine in the uh, auto body industry He's really gonna clean that up and then it'll Jeez. be uh, like a mirror so so what you're saying is a little dirt in it what do you yeah, mean yeah when they repainted it they didn't give it the uh, it isn't a majestic show paint job by any means it's so just a driver they might paint. they might have been painting it and there might have been a bit of dust in the booth you're saying is yeah it? or something blowing around yeah or maybe when they took it out of the booth that they uh, could have painted this in a barn for all i know <laughs> but it's pretty darn good you you guys are yeah i love that you're you're fussy <laughs> yeah i try to be yeah oh, look at this look at this this chrome is nice in here though huh yeah she's got dual chrome ears everything works radio the whole bit Love the striping too. Yeah, that oh, was is an that option. Striping to, oh, that's is that a vinyl stripe on there? Yep, yeah. that was an optional package on these cars. To just sets it off really good. So you you have really not done a lot to this car. Just cleaned it up a little bit. Did some mechanical repairs on it and uh, went over it mechanically. Had to fix the transmission. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. And, and it's an automatic again. I yeah, forgot. it is three-speed automatic. I tore the transmission apart and repaired it. You did? Yeah, it oh. works and runs good now. 
<laughs> We're getting a little rain here all of a sudden, a couple of drops. So what we've got here for a Cobra 428 Cobra jet, is it? Really? Yeah. Huh? Holy. And it's a Shelby to boot. It is. It's. Uh, what year is this one? This is a 1970 Shelby GT500 Mustang. Wow. That show uh, gone in 60 seconds. That's kind of almost the close. The they're almost neighbors. This, yeah. this car. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 This it, is sort of the Eleanor-ish kind of car. Yeah. yeah. It represented the uh, you know the kind of top of the food chain on the Mustang uh, platform back in the day and. Uh, 428. That was kind of a pretty specific engine that they came out with in Ford. Huh? The Ford, the 428 Cobra Jet was, you know, really linked to the, uh, no doubt, to the performance Mustangs, but you know, widely available in other uh, other Ford uh, car uh, offerings as well. You know, there's a couple of guys in the SAS Ford Mercury Club that have the same engine in uh, platforms other then than the, the Mustang. The, the Mustang, Mustang is yeah. definitely okay. the epicenter i'll call it of 428 cobra jet motors yeah, no kidding in the shelby i love this are these functional not on those ones no yeah they're they're, they're okay but yeah. was there a functionality to some of that at one time well the biggest functional <laughs> uh uh thing on the on this car would be the ram air scoop in the hood right the one yeah. that's right in the center oh, okay um that's uh you know forcing air down into the uh down into the uh intake system of the car and these are carbureted cars yeah, yeah. exactly and these are more of a, a show a show piece. You see a similar piece on uh, 69 and 70 Mach 1 Mustangs. Looks a little yeah. different than that. And and uh, in some types of cars, they are functional to get air down to the rear brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's crack her open and have a Absolutely, look inside yeah, the interior. You bet. Beautiful car. Yeah, Where did bet, you Bob. find this car? I actually picked this car up in uh, Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Wow. From okay. a fellow that I've done some work with for a number of years. Okay. He had it for about uh, six years. Knew that I was a, a car. Uh, an appreciator of cars and uh, <laughs> classic cars and uh, you know offered me the opportunity to uh, buy it from them last fall oh really and so I've really you know oh you bought it during COVID then I <laughs> did yeah wow. we closed the transaction during COVID Bob <laughs> geez I just love this snake here the Cobra thing yeah. here just on the side that's yeah. always a signature yeah these there's not a whole lot of these and this special louvered back here huh? yep the uh, that was uh, added on at the uh, time that the car was originally uh, uh, originally purchased um, I'm told it was a dealer installed option on the uh, okay. piece for the car. Okay. And the Shelby Snake, I mean, they still use that emblem on the new Shelbys to this day. Do they? So really? it's, yeah, yeah it's Cobra, become yeah. iconic. And uh, my wife says she's going to get a tattoo, with, so we'll see. Oh, wow, you, she's going all in. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I love the wheels. Uh, the wheels part of the the original package, or are they yeah. aftermarket? No, those are uh, those are original. So this uh, is kind of like showroom almost. Come out of the showroom, this car, it, right? It's uh, it had a full rotisserie restoration uh, right down a frame about uh, 17 years ago, 18 oh, years ago. Oh wow! And it's actually only had about uh, 1,800 miles put on it in uh, in about 18 years. Isn't it fantastic that certain guys just recognize that these cars were going to be iconic, and they just yeah, absolutely they did the work on them and and yeah. I'd ask you to pop the hood, but it might be a bit of work, is it? Or no, that's, it's got a, a fiberglass hood on it, which was another one of the Shelby uh, oh. features, and it just takes some hood pins here to uh, <coughs> okay. do it. I've kind of mastered those, so. Oh, you have, okay. I can do it with one hand now, Bob. Oh, you're doing good, look at that. Oh, there it is, the 428 Cobra. Yeah, it fills up the engine bay for sure. And not a lot of room between the shock towers and the So why a 428 Cobra for you? Well, I was, uh, you know, had had a number of uh, classic performance cars in the past, and I just really got addicted to the uh, the raw torque of the big block engines, yeah. as opposed to the small blocks. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if the car was a GT350, it would have a 351 in it. I'd still think it was an awesome car, and still would have wanted it. But this was a real bonus for me to get a the get a big block, a big block car yeah, again. Yeah. yeah. The car was uh, built in Dearborn, Michigan. It was uh, shipped to Toledo, Ohio. Uh, dealership there. I've got all the documentation showing the uh, showing the information, the uh, build sheet on the car, original bill of you know, uh, bill of sale, the whole price, the uh, pricey amount of fifty two hundred dollars. Okay. Back in the day, which I mean was a lot of money in yeah, nineteen seventy. Yeah, that was And a lot of money. Uh, then from there, the car ended up in uh, California for uh, a number of years, and uh, from there ended up in uh, Massachusetts, and then went to auction and went to. The, Okay, the car came to uh, Canada through a fellow from Penetanguishene, Ontario, who is a veterinarian. And uh, he didn't have it that long, maybe about a year. And then uh, my, uh, my friend uh, bought it uh, from, from him about six years ago. 
Wow. So I would be arguably probably only the fifth, no more than sixth owner of this car. Sixth owner. Boy, they get a life though, don't they, those yeah. cars? Yeah. Holy it's 53,000 miles on it for a 50-year-old 50 50 car is not a... That not is a, not bad, and all that no. traveling too. No, Holy exactly. Goodness. So. Well, thanks for joining us on Cruising on 7. Yeah, that is absolutely. a fantastic car. Thank you. I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. So tell us, where did you get your car from? I got it from my brother. He's had it for about 35 years and uh, finally decided he didn't want to play with it anymore and uh, ended up uh, getting it to me. Wow. Now yes. that, that's pretty cool. He's a good right? brother. He's a good brother. <laughs> absolutely. So where did your brother get it from? This car is originally, if you can believe it or not, and some of your, your uh, base uh, people watching the show might know this guy. Um, Chico Rush, Chico, Chico Ron Rush. Rush. Okay. This is one of his cars. Okay. My uh, brother married his sister, okay. and uh, that's how my brother got the car. He bought it from Chico. He bought okay. it from Chico, and uh, and then as a, thirty years later, thirty some years later, I get it to me. So okay, so Chico had a bunch of cars or a number of cars. I think he's he? got quite a few still, actually. Yeah, yeah. So was this? Did your brother paint it, or did? No, you it, it? this is the way he got it from from uh, Glenn himself. Okay. Um, Basically, and then it sat for 30 years. My brother had some mechanical problems that I don't think he really wanted to fix or yeah, yeah. knew how, maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then it sat. It was like a lawn ornament, really, for <laughs> a while. And then it sat in a shed. It was just kind of kicking around wherever they went. They took it with them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. never really drove it. Yeah. So it was restored about uh, maybe 35 years ago. Yeah. And then just sat. Well, you don't often see the, the the custom coupe, is it? Or custom right, you don't. It's the the different roof line on it. It's a shorter. Yeah, yeah. Than, exactly. than the sedan. Yeah, they're a, a different car. You don't see too many of them. They're in your race. Let's have a look at the engine. Is it flathead? Yep, it sure is. It's a 239. Two barrel yeah. carb. Totally bone stock. There's nothing performance about this car at all. You know, it's amazing. Guys would. Uh, Offenhauser and all these different guys would get, uh, you know, manifolds, and there's still people really going crazy. For Absolutely, the they're, flatheads. They, they still produce a lot of that aftermarket yeah. uh, performance stuff. You know, they I definitely have a different sound. They sound uh, more like a, uh, not like a conventional engine. They kind of sound like a tractor to me. Yeah, put her down. Let's light it up and see what it see what it sounds like. What a beautiful car, though. These were so popular. And you know, they went good, these flatheads. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, they only came with like about 100 horsepower. Yeah. So now, still. 70 years later, I'm kind of probably pretty lucky if I've got, if I've got 60 or 50. <laughs> oh, push button like it. Oh yeah, that's a nice running unit. Just kind of happy that it still runs. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't seen a whole bunch of mechanical attention since it was rebuilt way back then. Uh, so I, when I got it, I had to do everything that was rubber, all your yeah. wheel seals, your master cylinders, uh, oh. put new tires on it. Uh, it still needs a lot Are of work. Are you happy with it? You like the car? Oh, I love it, yeah, it's fun oh. to drive. It's <laughs> it's uh, it's a kick. It's uh, I've got another car at home as well, but this seems to be uh, a little bit more fun. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you just don't see them. Fantastic, you got a push button radio, does that work? The radio does not work, neither does the clock. But everything Those else, are the two toughest things. Does. Those are two tough things, though. Radio and clock. I yeah. know my dad. He had cars like this, and radio and clock. We're always thrilled if the clock worked for a little while, you know. Well, they're an option on the car, so you kind of it'd be nice to have it all working. Yeah. No. No. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. another option was the dome lights, and as you can see, they work. I got it just uh, three years ago, and then when COVID hit, I took a couple weeks off off of uh, work and had to do the floors because yeah, they're a yeah. little rusty. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, Got to her. I got a bunch to accomplish. Well, there's been a lot, of, a lot of stuff happening in COVID that it wasn't so bad, you know. A guy had a little more time. Had a lot more shop time, that's for sure. He couldn't <laughs> do anything. Couldn't yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay, so well, thanks you. for joining us on Cruise on Summer. Or did you want to say something else? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's Thank been a you. Pleasure.